Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so we will start the session. Uh, as we discussed, we have discussed about uh, the planning related activities, the consolidation related activities and some of the validation functionalities with respect to master data as well as transaction data. And as we discussed, consolidation is mainly each process driven. For each of the step in the consolidation process, there is a business process flow. Sorry, there is a business rule need to be created and then that business rule needs to be executed in order to complete that particular transaction in a consolidation system. But when it comes to planning, it is not individual individual business rule wise it will not happen. So planning mainly happens based on the functionality of the client perspective. And based on the client requirement with respect to planning, we need to do the planning related activities in that sequence using the BPC related objects as well as BPC related script logic, uh, ABAP logic, wherever it is required and then coming out with a solution which will draw your <coughs> planned or budgeted or forecasted balance sheet and p &L account. So for that purpose uh, we'll discuss a small demo because we have discussed about all the features of the BPC system, how to script, how to use the script logic and all. And we'll just view in this demo a overall picture how to use different functionalities uh, in this particular planning solution. Whenever we discuss about planning, it is not a single model. There will be generally multiple models will be involved uh, for a client. Some people will have a revenue separately, revenue calculation. Expenses might be having different uh, like uh, operating expenses, capital expenses, project expenses, uh, inventory separately. Like that they will maintain different planning scenarios for different expenses as well as revenues also. So when you want to draw your balance sheet and P&L account, you cannot draw an individual model the balance sheet and P&L. So in any planning uh, project where you will file multiple models, it will be, you will be combining those multiple models in one planning scenario. Generally people will call it as P&L planning or financial planning model where they will combine all the data and draw their final reporting uh, which is at the high level. <coughs> so in for supporting those things uh, we need to send the data from one application to another application when we are sending the data we have to be very careful that what data needs to be sent to one application to another application because sometimes what happens is the entire data that is there in revenue planning might not be required for expense calculation so only that data which is required needs to be sent to expense planning so that your database will not be having much problems when it is storing redundant data. So in this example, we'll just discuss as per our requirement, here we are having four application. One is standard, revenue model, and expense model. Finally, we are sending the data to P&L model in order to create our P&L. But in live environment, you might be having multiple expense scenarios like CapEx, then OPEX, then project cost, then capital expenditure, then depreciation planning. Like this, you might be having so many expense related planning scenarios. But here, for our example purposes, we are taking some four models in order to see how, what are all the different considerations we need to make in order to support this particular demo. Now, for our example purposes, we are saying standard cost where we are maintaining all the standard cost related activities. Generally in live scenario also, people will maintain one standard cost template where 
it is used to store all the information which is required for different planning purposes. <clears throat> it is similar to uh, what you can call it as tariff tables which we maintain. Suppose if it is, if, if we are having HR planning also, by grade wise, what is the average salary? And by grade wise, what is the allowances that is applicable? All those things can be stored in standard cost. And whenever you are doing the HR planning, we can bring that standard cost data into HR planning in order to calculate those values. And people will be provided access towards standard cost to maintain all the standard cost. What I said is an example for HR, like that you might be having a revenue also. For each of the product, what is the average selling price you maintain there? And the quantities will be maintained in revenue planning and the data from with respect to pricing will be maintained in standard cost. Similarly, if expenses are based on a percentage on revenue, then that percentages will be maintained in standard cost and that will be used for calculating the expenses. Like this, standard cost will store multiple data which will be used by different models whenever they are planning and whenever they are executing a logic, it will be based on that. You can maintain the same thing in revenue as well as expense also, but people will create a separate model and in that model, all the master tables will be maintained so that it, the specific access will be given to one or two administrators from the client perspective. What it happens is the maintenance of tables will be more accurate and you can see all the tables maintained in one particular model. Because of that only people will maintain it as a separate model and maintain all the master data tables with respect to any of the values. So in our example we are saying we are maintaining quantity, price and labor percentage, material percentage and travel percentage. These are the five elements we are maintaining in standard cost template out of which quantity and price will be required to be sent to revenue and material and expense and the travel percentage sent to expense planning to calculate the expense as well as revenue here. So if you see here, whenever I am maintaining these things, I have to be very careful, I have to draw at least a flow chart in BPC system with respect to planning because when I am moving the data from one application to another application, there will be a lot of dependencies on that. So suppose take a simple example, when I am maintaining standard cost, only quantity and price should go to revenue labor expense percentage, material travel expense percentage will go to expense planning. So there is a dependency. So based on that, you have to draw from standard cost, what are all the data that is going to different, different models. Here, it, here we are having only three, four GL accounts, so we are able to identify easily. But when it comes to live environment, suppose you are having five or six models with respect to planning revenue, expense, capex, project planning, inventory planning, HR planning, then there might be a lot of data that you need to send it to multiple models. At that time it becomes very, very important that you need to specifically mention from standard cost what are all the data that is moving. That is the first part. And second part, for calculating expenses, you are giving labor percentage, material percentage and travel percentage which are calculated as a percentage on revenue. So in order to have these percentages and get the expense calculated, we need to have revenue also. Then there is an interdependency that first revenue should be calculated and then only you can come to the expense planning. And you have to specifically mention from revenue where the data is going. And from here revenue, we are sending the data to expense also as well as P&L also. Why P&L? Because as we discussed, 
all the data which is relevant for cash flow purposes, balance sheet and P&L purposes, we'll be sending it to P&L where we'll draw our P&L balance sheet and cash flow statements generally in order to have single source of data we will send all the data to one model where our entire data will be clubbed. So that is why we need to draw from this where it needs to go and finally the expense is calculated and it will be pushed to expense planning. If some other module or model is dependent on expense planning that needs to be sent to that particular model also. Like that we have to design what is the dependencies with respect to the data movement. That is very, very important. When you are specifying the dependencies, you have to specify what are all the data you are sending it to the different models. That will make your life easier and you can find out what are all the things that you want to do the planning at different model levels. Now, <clears throat> when we are planning our P&L balance sheet as well as cash flow statements. When we are planning revenue, expense, HR, like this, there are some five or six models that is coming up. But apart from that, there will be a lot of GL accounts which you might not have planned there directly using any of the model. Because those things, there will not be any planning. It is based on the previous year actual you will just extrapolate something, a markup of 5% or 10% and you will post the values into the current year budget or plan category. So for those GL accounts, you have to identify your chart of accounts. Generally in live scenario, what we will do? We will have the chart of accounts uh, we'll have GL accounts uh, all the GL accounts will map like GL account 1, 2, like that, what, whatever the GL accounts you are having. Once you are done with your uh, solution designing, what people will do, they will map this value is coming from revenue model, this value is coming from uh, expense model, this value is coming from capex model, this more. Like this, people will maintain for each of the GL account where the data has been captured. And there will be lot of GL accounts which are not captured in the above models. In order to draw your P&L, you need to have data for that particular GLs also. Generally, these GLs will be planned based on an actual basis. So for this purpose, last year actual will be say 100. A thousand, there might be a requirement to have five percent markup and it will become say thousand fifty. So that will be your budgeted figure for these GL accounts. Since these GL accounts are not maintained anywhere in the other models, these GLs will be maintained as a direct input in PNL model or finance model, whatever the model name you will be calling. These will be a direct value input or a markup percentage based on a previous year actuals. So like this people will find out as a solution I take you have to find out what are all the GLs that you are going to cover in multiple models and the balance rest of the GLs which is a direct input or a percentage markup will be directly maintained in the input template in P&L model so that you can draw your you will have the entire chart of accounts data. Based on that, you can draw your P&L balance sheet and cash flow statements. This is very, very important extra exercise with respect to planning projects. Since consolidation will always be working on a trial balance, it will not have much problem when it, when it comes to the data. But when it comes to planning, where multiple planning scenarios will be involved, you have to identify what data that you are getting from your particular models. So, coming back to our example, so we are having quantity and price coming from standard cost. These percentages are coming from 
standard cost to here. <clears throat> so for us to calculate revenue, the quantity multiplied by sales is our revenue calculation. And that value needs to be posted to our sales GL account, that is PL010. For this, we need to have one script logic and DM package needs to be created. Similarly, the revenue multiplied, this is the revenue account, PL010, which is this one. Revenue multiplied by percentages will be called material cost, labor cost, and travel cost. These are the affected GL accounts. So here also we need to have one script logic and DM package needs to be created. Here we are having quantity and price, labor material and travel percentages. In order to send the data from here to revenue as well as expenses, we need to have script logic which is called destination app which we have discussed on, in our scripting part. Similarly, from revenue to data needs to be sent to expense planning as well as p and planning. So here also we need to have one destination script logic. From expense to p and we need to have one destination script logic. And in p and what we will need to have? We will have all the data that is coming and then any input of the data which is with respect to GL accounts which are not covered above will be created in the p and planning so that your p and planning will be having just one input template to cover the <coughs> GL accounts which are not covered in all the modules and then entire reporting will be directly done in p and planning. So in p and planning generally people will not have much calculations. It is just an input or a percentage of markup and save the data. <coughs> so after doing your solutioning, you have to find out from which model to another model the data is moving, what script logics are required in order to support this particular logic calculations and if it is done by through script logic or you need an ABAP coding to support this technical requirement, you have to find out that and then accordingly you have to create your script logic. So second thing is identify what are all the logics that needs to be done and how it needs to be captured. This functional details needs to be given to the technical consultant in order to build the logic. And then you have to see what are all the interdependencies and then first move the data which are interdependent and then do the calculations in the other models. Like this, you have to prepare one matrix from where to where the data is moving and which script you are using and how you are sending the data. When you are sending the data, you have to be careful only the relevant data needs to be sent so that you have to use your uh, scoping functionalities like XT member set in order to support that logic to send only the particular data and then finally arriving it to your p &L. So these are the important aspects you need to consider when you are doing the planning in the VPC system. So as I said, as we discussed everything, uh, we just wanted to have a overview of how the planning scenario works and as a solution how you will support the different models in order to have that understanding. We have created a separate demo class for planning. and uh, for this small example, we'll discuss how it has been built into the BPC system. And when we are discussing, you might see there is some GL accounts that is called quantity, price, labor percentage, material percentage, travel percentage. If you remember, these are not part of our chart of accounts. These are the additional GL accounts which are created for doing our calculations which is used in our scripting. So generally whenever you are working in BPC system, since it is an account based model, it is not a key figure based model. What is the difference between key figure based model and a account based model is in account based model we will have only one key figure column. Any other values will be represented not as a key fields but as a accounts in the BPC system. But when it comes to key figure model, 
all these things will be considered as members of a key field which can be used as a columns. But in BPC it's only one key figure and whatever the data you want to feed it to that key figure it has to be part of your account dimension. So that is why you have to <coughs> identify which are the additional GL accounts which are used in your scripting purposes to be part of your account dimension and you have to be very careful that whatever you are creating these additional GL accounts in order to support your logics should not be forming part of your chart of accounts. It should be outside your chart of accounts in the account dimension you need to create. Now we will go and see how we have created those GL accounts. I'll log off and log in again. So till now if you are having any doubts please let me know so that will clear and then we'll uh, see how go to administration screen dimension account now if you see here there is something called average price which I have created and if you see it is not forming part of any of the hierarchy what is average price and another is See, labor cost, material cost, labor percentage, material percentage, and then traveling percentage. These are the GL accounts which I have created for my script logic purposes, which is not forming part of any of the hierarchy, chart of accounts hierarchy. These are just created as an information GL accounts which are used for our script logic purposes. In live environment you might be creating some 30, 40, 50 GL accounts all like this which will be useful for your scripting purposes in order to store your multiple key figure values like average price, material, travel and then quantity. These are the additional GL accounts which we created for our scripting purposes. Like that you have to identify what are all the additional requirements with respect to scripting and create those things as a members of account dimension. Now we will go to the scripting part. Now we have model What we are having? We are having standard cost that is first model I have created and then we have revenue planning and then expense planning and then P&L planning. These are the four models as per my demo I have created. Like this you might be having seven or eight models in your client place to support the different planning requirements. So first create those models and maintain the respective master data which is with respect to the client and then maintain the additional account dimension related script logic values and these script logic values in the account dimension will keep on adding whenever they are creating the script logic there might be a requirement to create additional accounts also which will support their scripting purposes so you have to this will be keep on adding in your account dimension whenever they are doing the scripting also. Now we'll go into the logic script for standard cost because that is the first information which we'll be storing. And if you see here, in standard cost, I am keeping that 
destination app that is sending the data in the default logic. Why I am keeping here in the default logic is because here I am just storing this information and I am not doing any calculations. So whenever you are using the save button, as I said, whenever you are using the save button without any DM packages, you can use those logics in the default logic so that user need not run the DM package in order to execute that particular job. Since here I am only saving, I am not doing any calculations. I can use the destination app directly in the default logic. If you see here I have written destination app using default logic. Similarly, here I cannot use the destination app to send the data from revenue to expense as well as PNL. Why? Because I have doing calculations here and I am not doing the save data button. So wherever the save data button cannot be used and calculations are involved, I cannot use the default data manager package. So in order to show that difference, I have created like this. So wherever it is required, you can use the default. Wherever it cannot be possible, that is calculation dependent piece are there. You cannot use default logic. You have to use a DM package created for destination app. Now I have created the destination app. Here if you see, I am putting XTEAM member set and I am putting quantity and price needs to be sent to revenue planning and then material, labor and travel percentage needs to be sent to expense planning. So like this, I am segregating and I am scoping the data. So this is very, very important in order to know from each model which data you are moving to the other model. That is very, very important because based on that only your logic calculations will work and as well as you can reduce your redundancy data between the models. And then we all know the destination logic, destination app, what is the destination model. And then when account is star, star means it will take from the scoping, record factor one and end one. That means I am sending the same data to the revenue as well as expense planning with multiplication to fund which is given in the scoping. Now we will log in into the Excel and we will enter some data and we will see how the data movement will be there. Now we will log in into the standard cost. Create a template in order to store those information. I have created one template. <clears throat> say select Canada so we are working for Canada entity I'll maintain some prices in quantity and price if you remember quantity and price will be sent to our revenue model and uh, this percentages will be sent to our expense model. So I'll open those things also. I am opening the revenue template also.
So we are maintaining the data for Canada. So we will select Canada only. <coughs> expense plan. Now come here, these are the accounts, quantity and price and then this is the time and this is the products which we are doing and entity is Canada, this is actual and reporting currency is local currency. So we will maintain some quantity as well as prices. Okay. Now, if you see here, in the expense template or in the revenue template, you come here and refresh, the data is not available, the quantity and price. This is calculated in revenue planning directly. Now, you come to standard cost and try to save the data. System will automatically send the data to the revenue planning. Save. Now come to revenue and refresh. See, this is the data which we have maintained 100, 200, 300, 120, 130, 140, 8, 10, 12. This is the prices we maintain. And system automatically sending when I am saving the data directly in the standard cost. Why generally we will maintain uh, this logic, destination logic in standard cost is since the data with respect to the master pricing will be maintained by different individuals for different uh, model requirements. So again every time he need not go and calculate uh, because there will not be generally any calculations involved. It is just price maintenance. So instead of doing one more job by the user, if we create in the default logic, that will be directly gone to all the respective models which are, for which the data needs to be sent. So in this, with one shot, uh, you will be sending all the data which is required for different models uh, by different individuals inputting in the standard cost template. Now, in the standard cost template, what else we need? We need to have the material percentages also need to be sent. So come here, the percentages. And if you remember, in the expense calculation, Now these percentages, material, labor and travel percentages which we maintain in standard cost needs to come here into the expense planning. Now it is plan, we will maintain in standard cost, same material percentages,
case some percentages will be maintained. Now I am saving the data which will enable the data to move to revenue planning. Now I maintain the data in standard cost. Go to expense planning. Now come here and run. See, this is the material percentage, labor and travel percentage for each of the month, January, February, March, which I am having. And now, this PL010, which is the revenue, I need to get it from revenue planning in order to calculate and post this material cost, labor cost, and travel cost. So for this purpose, my requirement is revenue. Revenue I need to calculate and then send it to the expense planning in order to support my requirement. Now we'll go to the revenue planning. Now here this logic calculation of PL010 which is the sales which is quantity multiplied by price. Here we are using this script logic, simple script logic but in your live environment there might be requirement towards using the ABAP coding or wherever it is required script logic can also be used in order to support your logic requirements. But here I am mainly concentrating on the process flow. Now go and create a logic in order to have your revenue calculated. Go to revenue planning. Since I cannot maintain directly in the default logic, I have to maintain it as a separate logic file. Revenue. What I am saying when account is price, average price, expression is multiply quantity and average price and post it to PL010 account which we have already discussed how to create the logic and how to use the when is and, and when statements record and whether you are using expression or factor how to consider that. When account is average price then quantity and price should be multiplied and posted to PL010. This we have kept it in a separate custom logic called revenue. For that what we need to do? We need to create a DM package. So go to the DM package, organize, organize package list. What we have to do? We have to so go to DM package, run package. We have to create a logic file name, attach it to our, sorry, in the organized package we have already discussed using the default values. There is something called default formulas, you need to create that package by copying that and give your naming convention, go to modify script, attach your logic name there. So this we have already discussed, so I am not touching that. So we will create the package for the custom logic which we created in order to calculate this. Go to, now go to run package, select the package which we created, run actual currency 2014.0123 okay. now it is successful come here refresh now see it is showing my minus value because as we discussed all the revenue will be treated as minus in our SAP terminology that is why when it is calculating it is posting as minus but when it is coming to the reporting part it will show absolute figures income will be treated as minus expense will be plus so minus plus plus uh, income minus expenditure will be your P and L value so that system will automatically take care.
So now if you see 100 into 10,000, 200 into 15, 3,000, system has calculated the values. Now, if you see the expense planning, this PL010 values will not be updated here. Why? Because we have just calculated this logic using the DM package. In order to calculate PL010, we have not used the save button which is available for default logic. Unless you cannot use the save button, you cannot use the default logic to send the data. So that is why in order to send this data also, we need to have a separate DM package. If you see from sending revenue to expense and revenue to PNL, we need to have a separate DM package. So go here. So I have created one more custom package, destination revenue to expense. So as I said, when I'm sending the data, you have to segregate what data needs to be sent to what. So for PNL planning purposes, I am sending only PL010, that is PL planning, that is the revenue. And I am putting factor and then I am sending. And for expense planning also, I am sending the same GL account. And I am putting destination app as expense. Like this, you have to create to what are all the models this data has been required and this data has been sent. Similarly, you have to create a package in the revenue model in order to send the data. So go to data manager. I have already created that package and I have attached my logic to this particular package. Now come here and run. Then this data will be moved to the expense planning. Previously, the data is not there in expense planning. Now it will go and see in the expense planning. Come here. Perfect. Now come to expense planning. Refresh. See, the data has been moved to expense planning. Now I'll close the standard cost, which is not required. Now we'll open a PNL also. So we have Canada. Now if you see here, only the sales value is appearing here. Why? Because we have sent only the revenue data to both expense as well as my p and l As per my logic, from revenue to expense and revenue to PL also, I sent the data. Now if you see 10,000 is for January and 5,500 is for February and 7,900 is for 5,500 and 7,900 for March. Like this the data will be moved to your P&L plan. So now what we move the data from revenue to expense. Now it is third party sales since only one sales are there it is hierarchically updating till the net income level. Now as I said net income is combination of your expense minus sales. So once you update the sales values the net income will automatically get adjusted. Now come to expense planning. Now in expense planning also what we need to do? We need to first calculate the material cost, labor cost and travel cost which is based on a revenue. So for that purpose, create logics in your expense planning. Expense plan. I cannot use the default logic, so I am creating a custom logic called EXP. Here what I am saying, when account is material percentage, then 
revenue GL account into material percentage divided by 100 post it to PL110. PL110 is my material cost. If you want you can see the values here. PL110. This is the material cost and 120 is our labor cost and 320 is my travel expenses. Like that I am putting wherever the percentage with respect to that is available. Expression is account revenue into labor cost will be posted to this account. Then validate and close. Go to expense. Refresh. Run the DM package. For this also you have to create a package and you have to assign it to your so expense calculation. It is succeeded. Come here, refresh. See system automatically calculating 1000 into 10 percent, 100. Like that system posted PL, 110, 120 and 320 values. Now these values needs to be sent it to only to the P&L planning. Now come here and create a destination logic for P&L planning. Destination of what we are sending only these three values 110, 120, and 320 to PL plan. To expense. Now send this data to PL plan. Destination expense to PL. It has moved. Now go to your PNL planning. Same concept. Now see, you have total cost of 3500, 3050, and indirect cost of 950. So 10,000 minus 3950, 6050 is posted as net income. So if you remember in revenue template when I see it is showing minus value but when it comes to the reporting part system will automatically calculate and show in the absolute values and system automatically takes care about expense minus income will be posted to net income. <coughs> system automatically takes care. But when you run the packages and all system will automatically post with minus values. But when it comes to reporting part, system automatically takes absolute values only and accordingly it will calculate the net income. So this is how, what are all the additional GL accounts which are not forming part of those. You can directly maintain as an input template in p &L planning and input those values that will also get updated. Like suppose for example, this personal cost we are maintaining directly in this input template we have to maintain it as single product, product by product. Okay, now if we are maintaining this here that directly not in this particular template, this is a report but when you create, you create these GL accounts identify separately and maintain the separate input template and maintain those things. System automatically calculates and posts your net income and automatically now if you see it is moving to 1779. So like that system will automatically calculate and create your P&L and then based on that you can draw your net profit and balance sheet 
and then cash flow account also cash flow statements also you can create so for cash flow statements you can use account transformation and accordingly you can develop your logic here so this is with respect to uh, a small demo on the planning because it is not uh, individual uh, rule specific like uh, our consolidation so i just wanted to give a overview of how to use a different master data and how to draw up the solution when you are having multiple models and what are all the considerations you need to consider when you are working as a solution consultant and how to create the logics and how to send the data from one application to another application what are all the things you need to consider and what logics you need to use whether you need to use a custom logic where you have to create a package on your own or default logic all those things needs to be considered so this is with respect to the demo on the planning if you are having any doubts please let me know so that we will answer we will uh, clear those doubts before uh, we wrap up